Hey all here OS Reviews, you're watching our video review of the Ace PC P1. This is a Wi-Fi or cloud-enabled smart photo frame, and it has an 8-inch display. Afterwards, you can connect it to the internet and then send photos over to it using the app, uh, or potentially using other services like Dropbox, uh, Google Photos, so on and so forth. Uh, the price is around $130 on Amazon currently, so it's a little bit expensive, but it's also average for a smart photo frame if you shop around and compare the price. Uh, digital photo frames have been out for many years now, so it's nothing new. It's really the Wi-Fi part and uh, the, the fact that it's a cloud-enabled model that is the new and novel feature here. Uh, the biggest question is whether it's a worthwhile for the price and you know if you can repurpose an older Android tablet that you may already have sitting around to do similar tasks, and that can also save you a little bit of cash. Um, so you can see on the back here, we do have a quad-core processor. The Cortex A53 probably by MediaTek inside here. So it has a very similar processing package to a entry-level Android tablet. And there's also a 720p high-res panel, and of course it connects using Wi-Fi. Uh, there is a proprietary app that you can download for, I guess, tr transferring uh, files and, and content over uh, using Wi-Fi, and we'll see if you can add some other services. In here we have just the photo frame itself, and there is an integrated kickstand. Setting this off to the side, we have access to a quick start guide that's documented in full color, tells you how to download the app for Android and iOS, and how to set it up and use it for some of the other controls. Uh, it also plays back, it looks like music, in addition to a time and weather information. In here we have the charging adapter, uh, so it's just a very simple connector. It's a proprietary cable, it's not using micro USB or USB-C, so make sure you don't lose that and that's all. Taking a look at the design of the P1 first, uh, again, very similar to a lot of uh Android tablets, 8-inch and 9-inch Android tablets that we've seen on the market recently. There's a screen protector or film that we're going to remove. And afterwards, we have a glossy display. Now, I do wish that this would be a matte surface just because this will uh, reflect uh, light as well as attract fingerprints a little bit more easily. But nonetheless, there's access to the HPC logo and LED indicator light for connection and power. And on the back, we have access to a five-way navigation toggle uh, in addition to a dedicated home key and a back key. It looks very Android in terms of the styling. And there's also a speaker for playing back sound. Uh, the overall frame is relatively slim, as you can see on the edge here. It's only about you know seven millimeters or so. It is made entirely out of plastic, though, so there are no real aluminum accents. Um, as far as digital photo frames go, it has a fairly convenient size, um, although it doesn't have any decorative uh, optional frames, such as ones made out of wood or ones made out of a different color, just to disguise it and make it look more like a traditional frame. Um, on the back here, there's also access to the power adapter. There is actually a micro USB port. However, it doesn't provide power. It's only for transferring content over to the unit if you have an SD card inserted. There's also a, a thumb drive port, so you can connect a thumb drive or a hard drive if that's loaded up with uh, content inside. And then there's just some rubber feet on the bottom that also displays uh, the model number. So overall, a pretty clean design. Uh, I do wish that there were maybe a few other accessories, such as again, optional frames, maybe a remote control. After plugging the unit into power, it's booting up for the very first time. Uh, some things I want to point out very quickly is that 720p is actually pretty good in terms of resolution, especially on an 8-inch panel. Uh, most photo frames that we've seen in the past have been lower res, so overall your images should look fairly sharp, and it is an LCD IPS panel which has pretty good viewing angles, again very similar to a smartphone or an Android tablet. Uh, this one actually does have a touchscreen, so I misspoke earlier, it's actually a capacitive touchscreen, it doesn't work with physical objects, so if you point something sharp at it, it's not pressure sensitive. It works with your flesh and it's actually pretty sensitive, um, and the processor actually seems to be doing a pretty good job. We've successfully entered the Wi-Fi password, and the sounds that the keyboard makes is definitely Android. So this is probably running on some version of Android, maybe Lollipop, that's been customized so that it can only display photos, and afterwards we can just connect to it using our app. Uh, so this is what the main screen looks like. You can change the wallpaper. There's a very simple time and date on the top here. The power status is green because it's connected to power, and there's also the Wi-Fi indication logo on the top as well. Uh, we can tap on Cloud Album to view back images uh, using the companion app or other cloud services and actually there's a pop-up message something has stopped that is definitely running on Android and for photos it's basically local uh, files that are stored into the units built-in memory and you can also view back of course images stored on an SD card uh, there's also music 
calendar. And if we tap on that, this is what that looks like. So a very customized interface. Looks nothing like on a stock Android device. Very uh, large keys, which are easy to tap on. But already you can see that this is a fingerprint magnet. So it attracts quite a few uh, you know, uh, smudges as you start using it. And under settings, uh, again, uh, it's definitely, it's been customized here so that you can sync your devices. You can reconnect to a different wireless network. I can change settings like language, display, screen savers, uh, as well as storage and take a look at how much, again, memory is remaining. So there is eight gigs of built-in storage, it seems, and 10 gigs of built-in cloud storage that you get for free. Uh, so in total, you get about 18 gigs right out of the box as part of the $130, which actually seems like a fair uh, amount. Taking a closer look at performance, now one thing I do wish the photo frame could do was kind of adjust the angle of the kickstand because again, it's fixed at this uh, one degree. So there's no way of pushing it back if you have a table, let's say, that's slightly lower uh, in terms of height. Um, otherwise, I can take a look at some of the images I've stored on my SD card first, and it seems like there's no real problems as far as reading it off of the, an SD card or using the internal storage. Again, there's eight gigs of built-in storage. You can plug in an SD card and a thumb drive at the same time, and it's able to read both as well as tell you how much storage is available on your memory device. Uh, so for instance, if I tap on one of these images, you can see it's reasonable as far as loading it up uh, in pretty quick speed. Uh, so again, the processor, which is a quad-core chipset, seems to be doing a good enough job for loading up these quick images as expected. Uh, in terms of the overall uh, image quality, it seems pretty sharp as well. Colors are well saturated, and again, it's a pretty impressive panel. It's an IPS LCD screen. It's not 1080p, but 720p seems to be the norm for most of these smaller photo frames these days, and it's, uh, it's definitely sharp enough for viewing back these images and for uh, wallpapers as well as uh, images of people. Uh, no real problems. Now, since it is a touchscreen, it does support multi-touch. It's a capacitive panel, which means you can pin, uh, pinch in and out uh, using this gesture as well as navigate just like on any other tablet or or smartphone. In terms of the menu here, I can also rotate it. Uh, there is no built-in accelerometer, but I have to, but I can rotate it manually, uh, as you can see there. And furthermore, I can also scale the image uh, myself, and I can play it as a slideshow, which uh, I can set it as a transition so it loops back and forth, uh, so that I can continuously play back uh, in this in this a dynamic way without me having to touch it. Uh, you can also add uh, music to the background. The menu also gives me the ability to take a look at different transitions. I can set it to a specific mode, up to down, left to right, so on and so forth. And I can also take a look at the interval uh, time, and here's the background music that I can choose from. One additional feature that you have is the ability to favorite an image, and you can set this as a wallpaper. You can also uh, add it to your, again, favorites list, which means that uh, when it's looping and playing back slideshows randomly, it's going to have a tendency to play back this particular image a little bit more. As you can see here, looking at some uh, more detailed images, it you know, gives you plenty of detail to zoom in if someone wants to interact with the frame. In the main menu, if we tap on the time here, it also shows up as a larger clock, and I can set it up set up an alarm by tapping on plus. Uh, pretty typical layout. Uh, you can see there's a little bit of sluggishness sometimes, so it's definitely not you know a flagship level processor, uh, you know, compared to let's say the latest smartphone, but it works pretty well. Uh, the alarm here uh, is using the speaker on the back. It's a mono speaker, but it gets sufficiently loud for uh, chimes, ringtones, as well as for playing back some music and tracks in the background, so no real complaints there, and it fills up smaller spaces. Uh, without any problems. So you can set up alarms. It works pretty well as a Wi-Fi connected alarm clock. Obviously, uh, you know the biggest question here is if you pick, the, pick this up as an alarm clock, uh, whether it's uh, better than something like an Amazon uh, you know, Alexa-enabled smart alarm clock, or the Echo. One of the implicit uh, benefits of a Android-based cloud photo frame is that we should be able to see more firmware updates uh, as we use it and as the company uh, makes more of these cloud-connected devices, and that should hopefully unlock more features as well. Uh, furthermore, since it's basically an Android tablet disguised in the form of a photo frame, if you really wanted to, although I wouldn't personally recommend it, you could probably hack around with it, play around with it, and uh, just transform it into just a regular tablet, uh, although that kind of defeats the purpose, but you should be able to browse the web, for instance, if you wanted to. But uh, with more updates, hopefully we can also see additional widgets being developed and other functions, uh, because again, it's basically a smartphone or a tablet in the form of a photo frame. Uh, so this is kind of a slideshow showing off some of its various features, and it works pretty well. Uh, since it's connected to the internet, of course, you can stream and push content over anywhere in the world. Uh, not sure why you would, you would want to necessarily, unless you're using this for business situations, maybe if you have one in your 
your company and you're in a meeting somewhere else in the world and you know someone else is gonna visit your company, you could set it up to show a very specific image, for instance. If I tap on display, again, you can turn on the auto brightness, which is the proximity sensor I was talking about. And in terms of uh, about, you can also take a look at the ID number. Now this is important because uh, personally I found that the firmware that was running on this unit, uh, version 1.1 out of the box, uh, sometimes still has a few glitches and bugs. For instance, the frame ID, which should be the QR code uh, image here, you need to use this QR code because you should scan it with the smartphone in order to bind it with the phone for the cloud feature sometimes doesn't load properly. Uh, what you can do, however, is enter the code manually by looking at the ID number in the about section. Um, so again, some of these things haven't been completely resolved, but uh, uh, perhaps a future firmware update will fix it and hopefully again we'll be seeing some more continued support uh, down the road. So moving quickly into the uh, Android app portion, uh, this is what it looks like. It's simply called uh, Frame uh, from Mate, and tapping on it, uh, you have to first set up an account uh, so you can create a password and it, it will s more securely encrypt your data. After you're paired with the frame, uh, you can be on a different network altogether, uh, but it will still be able to send images over to the frame because it's using HPC's uh, own servers for doing that. Uh, the interface allows me to take a look at images or albums stored on my phone's local memory and then send it over to the frame, or I can take a look at the camera and actually launch a camera viewfinder here. And when you're satisfied, you can just tap on you know the image that you saw Previously, it's gonna show up here and then I can tap on send and that will pop it over to the frame. So that's been our review of the HPC P1, a cloud-based Wi-Fi digital photo frame that technically runs on Android. Uh, I think that it has a lot of clever tricks up its sleeves, like the fact that it acts as a pretty nice alarm clock, the fact that it's uh, able to connect to the internet and pull up your weather information, things like that. And it functions well. The screen itself is very sensitive. You can pinch in and out of your images, and it works well for playing back slideshows as well as for some music tracks that accompanies the photos. Um, however, there are still a few glitches and bugs in terms of the uh, settings that hopefully the company will, will resolve in some future firmware updates uh, down the road. Uh, furthermore, I think that $120 to $130 does seem a little bit pricey uh, considering, uh, again, it's, it's an Android tablet disguised in the form of a photo frame. So if you have an older tablet lying around, you may already be able to do many of the features that this thing can. Um, and lastly, I do think that there are a few improvements that, that can be made on the hard hardware front, such as having a matte screen as, a, as opposed to a glossy one, even though the screen here has a very good resolution and has a, a overall pretty good contrast and viewing angles. Uh, it attracts a lot of fingerprints as a touch panel uh, without a remote. And uh, again, the frames itself uh, aren't really adjustable. However, for a small lightweight solution, if you want an eight inch digital photo frame that has, again, continued support down the road and uh, works pretty well for both offline and cloud-based uh, media, then this is definitely a cool future-proof option to consider. So you can check out more details about this in our official written review, but for now, this has been our video. Thanks for watching here at OS Reviews. This has been the ASPC Cloud Connected Digital Photo Frame.